So I'm happy to finish up by talking about ultrasound contrast because I'm, I get very excited with the new applications that we've developed using contrast for vascular applications. These are off-label and I will go through that with you just so you know which, uh, which of these applications uh, would require consent uh, for, for their performance. So let's just start out saying ultrasound contrast, typically these gas-containing particles, they're described as microspheres or microbubbles which enhance the ultrasound signal. These agents are safe, non-toxic, and have shown to improve the diagnostic accuracy for a number of different types of studies. So they can be very cost effective compared to other types of studies such as contrast enhanced CT or MR or arteriography. And as I mentioned, uh, many of these applications I'm going to present to you this morning are off-label. Uh, there's a number of different kinds of contrast. Before we had these microbubbles, we used to use agitated saline. We would just fill a syringe with saline, shake it up, and then we would inject it. And of course, we would see the bubbles. They would be very reflective, but they would only last a few moments, and then they would just dissolve. So they didn't last very long and were not very effective for many of the applications that we needed them for. And then back in 1997, Optison came out, and, we, and that was very successful, and I probably do have some Optison cases to show with you. Uh, and then the later generation agents are Definity and Sonoview or Lumison, and most of the cases that I have here are, are, have, are being performed with Lumison. So Lumison are sulfur hexafluoride bubbles, and they're stabilized by a lipid shell. It's known as Sonoview in Europe and Asia since 2001. So it's been around a while. This is not brand new. And much of the original research has been done in Europe and Asia. It is FDA approved for contrast echocardiography and recently was cleared for use in the liver in 2016. So these microbubbles are very small. They're less than eight microns in diameter, so they're smaller than red blood cells, which allow them to pass through the smallest capillaries of the body, including the lungs. So they can circulate for a, for a significant period of time. And you can see here the shape of these bubbles. They have this outer shell of phospholipid, and they have this internal gas, which is the hexafluoride. And they remain within the vascular system after IV injection. They are a pure blood pool agent, which means that unlike the agents that we give for MR and CT, they're not taken up by the cells. They're not incorporated into the tissue. They stay in the blood pool. They're cleared from the body by exhalation through the lungs in a matter of minutes after the initial injection. 40 to 50 percent of the gas is exhaled after one minute, and they tend to remain in the circulation up to about 10 minutes depending on the dose. They have very strong echogenicity, as you will see. And just to show you what happens you know, when you look at these bubbles under the ultrasound beam, you see they actually vibrate. They absorb the energy, and they resonate. And this is what really gives them that extreme echogenicity that we see. So they really absorb ultrasound energy, and they reflect it back. And this is really where they become very powerful. 